Chongqing again to see high person at the nuts. What does that mean? That means we're separating the snobs from the slobs. I don't know too much about, but their name always comes up in discussions of China indie rock. They're one of like the big, the big indies. And we did, we listened to them all day yesterday. Oh, that's for you. What the hell? Look at this room. And what are you gonna do with it all? <laughs> How long have we been coming to Chongqing looking for the right place? Yeah. Staying in squalor riverboat houses and. Well, I'll tell you what I did is I raised the per night price we're willing to pay. Oh, more money will do. Until now, we have received thousands of comments and suggestions. We will consider them carefully and comprehensively. In the meantime, We'd like to ask you to keep on communicating and coordinating between one another. We'd also like to thank the press. Your work has hugely helped us with drawing public... As a veteran music journalist from New York City, how do you find yourself in this situation? Well, I bought tickets online because nobody gives me stuff for free anymore. <laughs> and uh, now we're here to see High Person. It's nerve-wracking. What if they don't like my outfit? <laughs> Little black number. What is this? It's another hot pot. <laughs> How many hot pots can you eat in a week? How many days are there? So far we've documented about three. <laughs> As it turns out, our trips to Chongqing are, can all be encapsulated in one building. We sleep upstairs, we eat here, and we rock downstairs. In the basement. In the basement. It's nice to be home from the big city. It's lunchtime, that's why it's deserted. Oh, so it's not haunted. It's, it's not haunted. A haunted lunch? It's haunted by hungry people. From the big city of Chongqing, we're now out in the countryside, ready to do a live review of the show last night of Hyperson. They were really amazing. I mean, we watched enough videos to, to expect that, but they were really good. And I would say, I mean, sometimes we watch bands that, you know, they're like five to seven people on stage and we're like, what, what are all these people doing? It sounds like nothing. But the high person is about five people. Yeah, and it fun. sounds like a, just a wall of sound coming in. Yeah, in a, in a really impressive way. And I think, I mean, I'm going to come at this from a Western perspective because that's the perspective I have. Um, so if there's, there's Chinese influences I'm not going to get, but it was totally like a, a mix of sugar cubes, a little bit of, you know, romantic new wave, post-punk, and they, they just like, they had control of the rock, I would say. <laughs> I heard, I heard Love and Rockets also, I heard ACDC. Yeah. And I think what impressed, because they they have like a melancholy sound, minor key. With, um, well, you could name his Ocean... Ocean Friend Forest. They have a very ethereal... It's like a naturalistic, goth, almost gothic kind of 
kind of. Yeah, a little shoegazy. Yeah, very shoegazy. But with a stompy. Yeah. Anthemic. Yeah, and I, I think, you know, it was so impressive that they melded together to, so well. They had a lot of, like, the main vocalist is amazing. Um, she, I wrote down. She has Shades of Bjork, Chrissy Hyde, Dolores Riordan, Karen O, every, every strong female voice. There's a lot of Slater Kinney in them too, if Slater Kinney had taken voice lessons. <laughs> I mean, I like the ramshackle of Slater Kinney, but the singer of High Person, she's, she's, she's got the, the voice, she's very trained, I think. Um, and I like that they would switch from these kind of intricate harmonies to singing all all the singers in unison was like a very powerful thing yeah. I noticed that they could do and they had like a very um, strong control of like switching the mood switching the dy sound dynamics it was just like a very dynamic show overall I would say they were strong the rhythm section was just like spot oh on. yeah I said, like he keeps military time is what <laughs> I wrote in my notes and uh, which goes with their the whole costume persona set up both bleak yeah um, yeah workmen. on this album she's got the lead singer's got these two braids with the bangs which is like a very chinese communist little girl look with and, like the military shirt on and like a chengdu countryside there's, there's a whole like the aesthetic of like yeah. like david byrne with a big suit like there's a yeah there's a decided there's presence to it yeah because that's i even i wrote down uh, i thought this was hilarious last night we'll see what i think of it now oh i hate to make this comparison but you too oh i thought that too because it's, it's not in the anthem it's it's and there's even like the jangle of that guitar mm -hmm. um yeah, he was like, a, like, like if edge. the edge was cool. If, yeah, if the edge was cool and could play <laughs> guitar. Yeah, they were they were just so good, and it is also like even living in China for eight years, we live a pretty square life because our. Okay. Song. I love Lu Zhou. Don't get me wrong, hey. YL, we're not gonna move. I love Lu Zhou, but it's not a cool city. Lu Zhou Square. Um, it's pointy like a pencil. But it is like, it's always striking when we go to these shows and there's like kids rocking out. There's a sweaty guitarist who took his shirt off. Like, <laughs> that's also China. Uh, there's all these like goth kids like swapped in like black robes and. Yeah. I mean, not robes, but big baggy clothes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Chains and. And it, yeah, and it's just like, it feels the same as going to concerts in my youth. Oh, um, yeah. You... When you'd like get in a crowd and it'd be all hot and sweaty, but you didn't care because you loved the music. And it does like, they had such an energy, both the crowd and the audience. Like, mm. I mean, the audience and the band. They were like feeding off each other in a great way. And I, I used to do this a lot in my live show reviews for the paper. Is I, I like to mention in New York City. It, I like to mention the audience because it's not a record review. It's not just a music review. It's a it's a review of this moment, and the the crowd was fully with the band to the point where like it's a small club, but they would play the opening jangly notes to a, the mm -hmm. hit, mm -hmm. and the the crowd would go wild, right. and like everybody was singing. Long and, and the banter. Like it was a total collective. The banter between the whole band, because the, everybody would talk to the audience and the audience would talk back to them. So yeah, yeah, it was like a very that, that intimate essence. moment that we got to take part in. Yeah. And every time we go to the Nuts Club, if it was just like one band, I would say it was a fluke. But like, yeah, it, has it always that. has that feeling of like you're in, you're involved in something special. Yeah. Um, so if, you, if you're in Chongqing, go to Nuts Club. <laughs> um, but it, it really did like, like it's a, it's kind of a joke in in School of Rock that Jack Black's character feels this way. But like while it's happening, when you're at a good show, it does feel like one good rock show could change the world. Mm -hmm. And I, I think they, they conveyed that feeling. Their opening tune was like there's just a, they're again anthemic. 
face of, of just showing up. Yeah. That explosion of like, we're here. Like, you could feel it throughout the crowd and you could feel it in yourself. Yeah, I mean, they could make so much noise you would feel pushed away. And then they could take it down so quiet that everybody like, yeah. you could hear a pin drop. And, and you were in a moment, like this yeah. was a thing happening. Yeah. And that they were talented musicians who, who really... Oh, definitely. Um, knew in, their, they knew their stuff, but it didn't feel technical. It still felt like raw and emotional and, and open. Well, there, there was a lot of like noise rock. There was a lot of sonic youth. The, yeah, a lot yeah, of the, yeah, yeah. The, the things that are typically said as influential to underground Chinese rock yeah. was there yeah. and proficient, like with years of like, yeah. I know how to work my stomp boxes. Yeah, but it's not just color by numbers. I, I'm playing the right notes that, that sometimes yeah. Um, sometimes you find. Well, like the, like a lot of the, the karaoke, not karaoke, but like uh, sing song, acoustic guitar. Yeah. I mean, I think I, I kind of play like that. I'm <laughs> hitting the right notes. It's not very exciting. <laughs> this was like improv dance at the same time. That yeah. It was it was both precision and and only existing in that moment. Yeah. So. Powerful. Powerful stuff. Ten, ten, ten China slaps. <laughs> it was a good show. They're still on tour. This, I think this is just the beginning of their tour. So if you are in China, yeah. look up where High Person's playing and go. Yeah, we're going to go see him in Chengdu in a couple yeah, weeks. Yeah, we're going to go back to the Chengdu show on the 24th so it's in October. Yeah, so barely. We're not even going to have enough time to recover. <laughs> <laughs> That's Emily with a China slot. Thank you.